everyone well I am back finally this is the really busy season for me I have been super super busy with lots of clients and this season is very popular for my hyperpigmentation and my melasma clients because in the winter time the pigmentation formation and sebaceous glands really slow down so this is when I can focus on my melasma hyperpigmentation clients as well as my anti-aging clients um, so I am so sorry that I have not been online and I have only been in Idaho now for just a little over a year and I've made so many friends that I'm spending a lot of time with them. So for those of you who are new to my channel, uh, I retired back in the December 2019 and I moved and I actually was not going to do this anymore, but a lot of my clients wanted me to come back and to continue treatment. So I thought, oh, I could just do this part time. And now it's, I try to manage it so that I am not full time. So between balancing this, doing everything online and having a great time um, with a lot of my newfound friends, um, it's been a challenge. So my name is Christy and I have been treating clients now for over 15 years and I've done, I've performed over 26,000 different treatments by the time I downloaded all of my information from my software program. So I have a lot of experience, especially in the areas of hyperpigmentation and melasma. So for those of you who've been uh, following me, you guys love it when I post actual clients. So I finally got two volunteers that were willing to share their experience. So the first one, this is Melinda and she is from Texas and she's in her 50s and when she came to me she had melasma patches all over her face. Now this executive assistant, her first appointment, she found me on YouTube and her first appointment was February 10th of 2021. So this is after I came back and started treating people online. And she had been on, she according to the consultation form that she had filled out, she had been on birth control for about 13 years and she had melasma for about 10 years. And her prior treatment included that she had seen three dermatologists over the course of six years, including, or another one, uh, another dermatologist online. Now in 2012, she had one session of microdermabrasion, and then in 2014, she did five sessions of broadband light, uh, light treatment for her melasma. And she said she saw no improvement, and actually over the course of time, she saw that it got worse. So I've got her paperwork right here. So what I do with my online consultations is I have pages and pages and pages of notes that I take with my clients and so that I can keep track of their success or if they're actually going backwards. So in September, October of 2020, she started a cream that was called the M Plus Spot Cream from Muesli. And she also was on Estrovin that was over the counter for her menopause. Now that that formulation that she was using, let me read off to you what her formulation was. It was 12% hydroquinone, 0.05% uh, tretinoin, a 6% kojic acid, 2% niacinamide, and 2.5% hydrocortisone. Um, and she said that it first started to improve and actually improved a whole lot, but then as the pigmentation decreased, the redness increased. So she was having sensitivity. She was having experiencing some, uh, some flakiness, not a whole lot of flakiness, but more dryness. And her skin was becoming increasingly sensitive to products that she was applying on her face over time. And then when she, uh, when her skin would go out in the sun, her skin would become extremely sensitive, feeling tingly. Um, and at some point, the, she noticed that she wasn't sure if the pigmentation was increasing along with the redness, like the redness was uh, really pronouncing that pigmentation. She wasn't really sure. So eventually, she decided to decrease usage of that because she saw that her skin over time was increasingly becoming more and more sensitive. 
Now you can see in the photo right here how you can see that pigmentation, but you can also see some of that inflammation and that redness and that sensitivity. And what she asked me was, is there a way that I can treat this hyperpigmentation or in her case, which is melasma, without that sensitivity? And I said, yes, but we have to go really slow. And so what we did is the first step in her treatment was we had to reduce inflammation because prolonged inflammation stimulates pigmentation formation for people who have darker skin or who are able to tan. So she was watching all these videos that was saying the best way to treat hyperpigmentation is to use exfoliating products like glycolic acid, like tretinoin, um, she was using azelaic acid. She was using all these different things, trying to figure out which combination, which product was going to work. And nothing was seem, seemed to be working. The only thing that was increasing was the inflammation. So to her surprise, we, I told her we're going to stop usage of all of that and we're going to have to wait until her skin decreased in inflammation. So a lot of the products that I recommended actually had no active ingredients as far as treating the hyperpigmentation. We actually had to stop, back up, and make a U-turn and go back and use products that reduced inflammation, increased her hydration, because also when you have excessive dehydration and dryness, you also can increase in sensitivity. So, and that's just a natural byproduct of when your skin is exfoliating, and that happens a lot when you are using a lot of AHA-based products and tretinoin, so we had to stop doing that. So I had her actually stop exfoliating. I had to I had her using a lots of hydrating products to increase the hydration in her skin as well as a lot of anti-inflammatory properties to just reduce that redness. So I told her number 1, you're going to be frustrated cuz we have to go slow. Okay? So whenever you do excessive speed in trying to treat um, some of the skin conditions, when you increase in sensitivity and inflammation, you actually have to go slower and actually go backwards in some of the steps. Now there is a part of the consultation where I ask lots of questions in regards to diet because diet has a lot to do with the skin as well. And this is more the internal. However, that wasn't my first main focus for her specifically because her skin was really, really inflamed. Now for breakfast, she actually ate a fairly good breakfast. She ate a breakfast that was high in protein and fiber so it was gonna keep her full. Her lunch and her dinner, uh, had a lot to be desired because sometimes she ate healthy and other times she ate fast food depending on her schedule. So I did tell her because she did the light treatments that are going to cause the deeper layer, layer scarring, which um, when you look at a lot of photos of hyperpigmentation, typically people who've done invasive treatments, by the shape of the melasma and, and the coloring of the melasma, you can tell sometimes. And so with her, I told her now, we're going to get, we're going to be able to break up a lot of that surface light layer pigmentation. But some of the ones that you could tell where they really focus that late, that, that light on there, we're going to have to reduce that inflammation in the lower la levels later with supplementation. So we're doing that now. She is on the MD Dermacytical Pro Max because that's typically for people who have um, really stubborn melasma. So she is doing um, that. Now these photos right here were taken on March 23rd, 2021. So approximately about a month later when she checked in. And as you can see by the photos, her skin, just the texture, the health has really improved. You can see um, really good hydration of her skin. Obviously, there's still melasma there, but I told her we're not even going to focus on that. The, the first step is to reduce inflammation. So you can see a lot of the redness has gone away and has improved. Now, I waited a little bit longer before we introduced um, skin actives into her um, skincare because she had been doing a lot of things that increased inflammation in her skin for some time. So I didn't want to rush into that and then have her skin get sensitive again. So you have to remember, the longer your skin has been 
going under undergoing inflammation the longer it takes because you the longer it takes because you have to focus on reducing inflammation first and then introducing the actives depending on the skin type now if you see this photo here this photo right here was actually taken may 26 of this year and you can see that the melasma the color of the melasma has lightened up some of the patches have even broken apart and her melasma the appearance of her melasma is continually improving now one of the main focuses is that when i uh treat people who have melasma i do it drug free so there are no big pharma uh, medications that are being used so one of the things is when i'm treating people for melasma we are going for more long term so if we're going to do long term it does take longer now she is actually using some of the md dermaceutical uh more the more clinical based skincare that's really helping without increasing that okay so to avoid any mistakes in her protocol this is what she is doing now so i just met with her and she is so she's doing the MD Dermaceutical Pro Max. She is with the supplementation of a lipid soluble glutathione. Um, she's using a balancing cleanser, the gentle brightening exfoliating powder, the um, three cross sex serum with the astaxanthin, MD Dermaceutical Advanced Pigment Control Mellow Bright Step 2, and the Age Reverse Brightening Serum. She's also using in the evening the foaming cleansing oil because she's she is using a uh a hundred percent physical based sunscreen it's really important that you get all of that off because when you're using a lot of these um, serums or active ingredients it's really important that you get it on the skin so when you have a physical barrier like a physical based sunscreen it's really important to get that off so she's using the foaming based cleansing oil um and let's see so as you can see, I'm going to put the links of some of the products below because you can take a look at the ingredients to, to, to see that there are no harsh ingredients that are in any of these products. Now, one of the other things that is very common with treating hyperpigmentation is there is two combinations that a lot of um, dermatologists like to use and that is hydroquinone and tretinoin together and usually it may be paired with a hydrocortisone to reduce inflammation well the thing is is that with winter the combination of those two can be really drying to the skin and if that client is living in a climate that's very harsh where they're, they're exposed to very cold weather outside as well as heat inside and their skin is drier and maybe they're they're um they're in their 40s and 50s and they have drier skin it only increases in sensitivity so one of the things that I did is I had her use the brightening um, the brightening biopeptide toner because it has seven it has seven ingredients that help lighten her skin and hydrate her skin so it helps actually increase or boost the efficacy of some of the lightening products without her skin being you know dried out so we used that as well so what I'm doing is basically when you're treating somebody naturally for hyperpigmentation or even more difficult is melasma and you're trying to do it without big pharma drugs, then you have to go slower and the pH is very, very important. And a lot of that is asking lots and lots of questions uh, before you even start the treatment and then seeing how their skin responds waiting a little bit longer and then looking at it again and seeing if it progresses because if you wait too long and the skin is now starting to go downhill that pigmentation can come back so that's why it's really important that you closely monitor the progress of hyperpigmentation so if you are looking to treat your hyperpigmentation or your uh, melasma or even anti-aging without the help of big pharma topical drugs and some of them are even taking some uh, medication for this but you're not interested in doing that or you tried that and it was not successful then I invite you there's going to be links in the description below um, of more information on the consultation as well as if you want to you can go onto my website 
on GoSeeChristy.com, and the link will be below, you can take an acne spot quiz, a age spot quiz, or a melasma quiz to just get a general rule of what products may be better suited to you. Now, this is very general because obviously it doesn't go into the nitty gritty like the consultation, but it gives you a good view. Now, there is if by the way that you answer these questions, it's very intuitive. So by the when you in when you uh, answer these questions, sometimes some people will say, "Well, I only got a few products, and then the rest were consultation." That is because based on what you put on your consultation, will tell you it, truthfully, like what your options are and if you are at that point where you've tried a whole bunch of things and your skin didn't respond or it came back that's when you're going to have to get uh, professional help but so if you're interested in that i will put the links down in below so you can take a look at that and if you want to look more into the consultation because remember makeup is an art skincare is a science and i'll have more to follow up with another client who had started to have age spots and we took a, a picture and she doesn't have those age spots anymore. So remember, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.